There was pain in this place. Without even considering the valley outside the door, the poison and the pain and the hate that filled that wonderful, delectable place, he had found a microcosm of suffering in which he could truly immerse himself. He could sense it on both sides of the veil of death. The smell still hung in the air after hundreds of years, an acrid melange of a hundred different poisonous herbs that were burned here time and time again. The smoke it's dug its way into the stones too deeply. The copper undertones of gallons of dried blood has seeped into the cracks in the floor and the gaps between the stones. No hand could scrub these things away. These smells will remain forever, unsettling, unpleasant, but unknowable to any but a connoisseur, one like him. On the other side of the veil, though, the scars are deeper. Beyond the barrier between life and death, there are memories burned into these walls. Memories and screams, the kind of blood that never dries, and the kind of fear and pain and desperation that warms even the coldest, deadest pieces of his heart. It is in places like this, where countless innocents have had their lives and their pain used as a bloody currency, that he truly appreciates his dual nature. Who else could see this entire picture for the masterpiece that it is? Who else could trace the thousands of brushstrokes of pure horror that make this place what it is? And in the end, who could weave these nightmarish threads of unadulterated suffering into himself? Who could use this symphony of echoing screams to become more, if not him? Though destiny was dead, though no divine hand save for the voice and screams herself could even reach him, he was fated to find this place. It was made for him. He could feel it. He stood with his back to the altar and his eyes on the door and let the waves roll through his open, yawning wounds. This is Pot Against the Machine. Welcome back to Pot Against the Machine, the only Pathfinder actual play that'll dunk you in our plasma tank just to prove that you're a worthy vessel for our revenge. I'm your host, and here's everybody. I think it's too soon, uh, Sam. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no time has passed since you threw a news at us. It seems, it feels like it was long ago, even though it was no time ago at all. Last week on the program, the party recovering from the uh, fight with the Nethal Gu uh, dealt with some remaining poison issues um, and then worked their way into the hourglass-like chamber at the sort of shoulders, apparently, of this beast. Um, There they found some more membranous walls that they could go through, checked them for traps, heard some metal clanking on the other side, and pushed through, where they found a kind of triangular chamber, at the back of which was a big old 15-foot tall, 15-foot wide tank of bubbling yellow liquid with white wisps of smoke flying off of it. And, um, you know, they thought this was a pretty normal thing to just spend some time in a room with, And as they were getting closer, it started talking to them psychically. It turns out it was really, really mad. It was mad at the Dominion of the Black for uh, building it and um, making it fly spaceship for them and then sort of leaving it to die. It was mad about its whole lot in life. And, um, oh yeah, it was the brain of the giant dead monster or dying monster and it appears to just be left here to 
die, I guess. It's it's unclear, but their dominions moved on to making new ships and new ship mines. And um, it told the party about some of the things they could find in the Dominion's hive, like little brains that walk around on four legs, and uh, maybe one of them wearing the body of a dragon, no big whoop there. And um, let them know that at the back of the triangular room, there was a little room where there was some treasure. Um, but once the party went to crack open that room and get all that sweet, sweet treasure, uh, the ship mine decided that it needed to know if the party was strong enough to stand against the Dominion of the Black. And, of course, the only way to know that would be to try to kill them. And try to kill them it did, and it's it's doing pretty well. It shot some plasma, it did some real damage to Alwyn and Levi, and then uh, it dunked Tarazi in its tank, where he is currently drowning in plasma water. As he tries to break out from the inside, and the party tries to either break him out from the outside or kill the thing. But in the meantime, it is um, has nearly knocked Levi out and has been sapping Kira's intelligence. And uh, that's where we are now, right after the Star's Whisper. That's the name of the ship mine's turn is over. And the Snake Squad is up, the semi-submerged Snake Squad. Yeah, Tarazi is going to smash his way out. This is going to happen. I might have missed all of them uh, with just complete horrific rolls. Uh, does a 16 hit the inside of this thing? I don't think a 16 is going to overcome the armor of this thing. Yeah, that was the highest of my three rolls. That's uh, really bad. Yes. Yes, uh, if you combined my three different die roll numbers, that would have probably been really useful on one of them. Uh, wobbling on his goop, Levi is going to make a single chomp before he falls unconscious. It's a nat 20, but it doesn't matter. Uh, <clears throat> cool to know that my dice has one, though. <laughs> it cannot be crit, but it can be hit. Max, at least, 20 points of damage. 20 points of damage? Some of that goes through. And as he goes to try and grab it, his eyes roll back into his goopy head, and he falls unconscious. All right. It's a tricky situation for the snaky situations. Uh, so now Asuma is going to try to shoot some ice bolts at this thing since she knows that ice bolts can hit it. First one's going to hit. Alright, not too bad damage there. Second one, also going to hit it. Third one also going to hit it. She's turned things around a little bit. Fourth one is a natural one. And the last one will miss as well. Still some pretty good damage. This thing is starting to burble rather furiously. And, um... Kira, you're up. Am I muted? No. Okay. I'm gonna smash it with a chainsaw. Four times, or I'm going to try to. Are you smashing the ship mine or the tank? Tank. I am attacking the tank. All right. I'm waiting for my hero lab to open up, but while we do that, I can get some rolls going. That's hot. That is not great. That is a 29 on the first one. 29 will hit. Okay. That is a... Uh, ooh, 22 on the second. I don't think that one works. Uh, 22 will not. A natural 20 on the third for a 33. Alright, that'll hit, but no crits. Yep, and uh, 14 on the last one, so two hits. Alright. 
Uh, 71 points of damage this time. Is the tank broken, Sam? Well, the tank is cracked enough that it has the broken condition at this point, which means that if Tarazi tries to escape using a combat maneuver or an escape artist, any attempt will get a plus eight circumstance bonus from the tank being broken. The tank is not actually destroyed, though, so, you know, the ship mind is still in it. Uh, we'll take it. Which will, I believe, bring us to the feverish Brixby. Brixby is going to level a... just. All right, Brixby, uh, seeing his friend contained inside the goo, like some sort of like uh, horrifically murderous and corrosive 1950s jello mold, is going to sorry, the 4150s jello mold is going to uh, make a little gun out of his forefinger and thumb and fire three scorching rays at tank, not the creature itself. Bell resistance. All right, I will roll that first. I probably should have asked that about the other things before, but I am bad at stat blocks. Too bad you are still sensory overloaded. <laughs> <laughs> no take backs. Uh, oh yeah, I have I have the good feats for this. All right, that is a 32. Yeah, that's plenty. I'm going to roll all of these things separate because I get the impression that there is some sort of fire resistance going on here. Um, all right, uh, 13, 13, and a 19. Uh, together, we are looking at 42. All right, some of that goes through. As the hardness does reduce energy damage as well, so it wears away. Sense. 45. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, that math actually maths. All right, you going anywhere? Or you sticking where you are? I would like to move back now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done being bold. Now I'm going to move uh, in line with it. No, I'm going to move into the room a little bit. There we go. Oh, I shut the door. Yeah. Moving back 25 feet. All right. That's going to take us to Alloin. Okay. Uh, Alloin is going to, uh, thanks to his handy haversack, as a move action only, he can pull out a wand. And he is going to pull out with its last charge that he's had sitting for frickin' ever because he never uses it, uh, or at least hasn't for quite a while, uh, the Wand of Lightning Bolt with one charge left in it uh, <laughs> because I feel like that's going to do better than uh, my scorching, my level two scorching ray at this point. Uh, and maybe it'll count as hitting the thing and the uh, container because it's technically a line attack. Uh, and I can draw a line right here that does not hit Tarazi where you have him. So that thing is going to have to make me a reflex save. How is the uh, thing stuck in a <laughs> jar's reflex? Remarkably good, but does it still have that minus six? Uh, I think no, because Brixie's turn, right? No, it does not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does not. Then um, 18 on the reflex save. Which I think saves on this because it's a wand. Uh, yes, it does. So it'll only take half, which is... And it is a caster level 5. That is 1d6, and it'll take 1d6 per 5, and it'll take half of that. Three. 16, so it is going to take 8 points of electricity damage, and I don't know if... Uh, that also damages the container since it's a line attack. Yeah, I'll say a little bit. It hits the container, does a little bit of damage, still hitting that hardness. As you say, it's not going to do much with the hardness. It's, I mean, if it's a hardness 10, it wouldn't do anything to it, but I'm hoping it does something. And then he will uh, throw that wand on the ground <laughs> because that's finally used up. Uh, the wand is spent. It actually explodes and does um, 15d6 explosion damage 
Um, and Brixby's got in there too. <laughs> um, Hate to see it. So the electricity itself doesn't look like it hurt the ship mind Ugh. at all. But now, see, I was worried it would be immune to fire because it's. You keep talking about it being plasma, which is why I didn't want to do Scorching Ray, but apparently it's immune to lightning, too. That's awesome. Well, in Starfinder, um, plasma damage is electricity and fire. Oh, plasma is both. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. As we come back around to the top of round four, I need another fortitude save from Tarazi. Only a 19, Sam. 19 total? Oh, yeah. Rolling below five. All right, so you're looking at 22 plasma damage and uh, four intelligence damage. Oh boy. And now, let's see. Oh, it's still the ship mine's turn. That wasn't its turn. That was just. And don't forget, it has to roll a uh, will save to see if it wants to do anything. Yeah, let's do that roll save with no penalty this time and a 27. Ugh. Yeah. Alright, so first things first. I think what it's gonna do. Well, let me look at the size of this. I guess that's not quick, and so it doesn't wanna do that. It's gonna reach out and try to touch Kira again with that little touchy doodle spell. Um, so 33 uh, versus touch for a little touch attack. Yeah. Um, 25 on the blur, so I need a will save. It's a 22. All right, 22 saves. You don't have to worry about that spell, but you do have to worry about getting slapped a few times here. That's fine. Uh, 37 on the first slam. Okay. Uh, 68 on the blur. Okay. 18 damage and a will save. 18 damage. That is another 22. All right, that saves exactly. Yes. Um, the next one is a 34 to hit. Mm-hmm. Super good at hitting. 56 on the blur. Okay. Uh, 17 damage and another will save. 17... And will save. Ooh, that one's not as good. That's a 20. F- Wait. That's a uh, 19. That is- nope. 17. Ooh, just getting worse and worse. And it continues to get worse as Kira takes four intelligence damage. So I'm pretty sure that puts me at zero. I think I had four left. If, Which. If you hit zero intelligence, Kira does fall unconscious. Okay, wait, let me make, let me just let me make sure that I'm doing this right. Ability score damage, one, two, three, four. Oh, yep, it turned red. My int damage exceeds my int ability. So I'm pretty sure that's not great. All right, Kira has fallen to the ground. She is out. The snake squad is partially out and partially submerged. Yeah, um, so remind me of the bonus for this thing being broken where I had to consider a CM Bizzle. Uh, you get a plus eight to any attempts to escape. <sighs> attempts to escape, but this CMD is at least a 37 because that's what I rolled to grapple and failed. Uh, so I wish my CMB was higher to where I feel like it'd be worth it. Instead... Uh, it seems like the Null Blade's been doing full damage to this container, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I was pretty sure. And with, I'm gonna take power attack off. I don't love losing the damage, but last turn, uh, was humiliating and flailing and missing three times. So we're gonna flail and try and hit instead. Uh, 23 will hit it from the inside. Okay, then we have two hits, because the 
Second hit was a 30, uh, and the third missed badly. Uh, 18 and 9. Alright, it looks super, super almost broken, but not broken through. Yeah. Yeah. Losing that 8 damage on each hit was a bummer. But, uh, I don't need to roll a death save because Levi is just at 0, so that'll do it for the old Snake Squad. Alright. I think Asuma is getting the hint that cracking the egg is what we want to do so she's going to shoot to break the container rather than shooting at the hive mind this time and she gets a natural 20. so nice. no roll to confirm just damage a little bit more damage on the thing Gonna shoot it again because it's not enough to break it. <laughs> a natural 19. Um, it's getting the closer. We need. It's getting closer as she chips away at it. She misses on the third one, misses on the fourth one, and hits on the fifth. Because she gets infinity attacks. All right. It's very brittle at this point, but I'm afraid that she didn't get through it because of that hardness. Now Kira is um, unconscious from intelligence strain which I don't think I've ever actually seen happen in Pathfinder. Yay! A first! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> um, so man, I just I don't, don't think, go then, right? Yeah, I don't think you get a turn then. Yeah, okay. So we're back up to Brixby. All right. Um, this was a fun one to pick in my spell book for. Brixby is going to reach up and grab his necklace, his arcane bond, his connection to Brixby. And he sees his friend, Tarazi, in the tank. Um, he sees both of his friends down. And he reaches into his spell component pouch and he pulls out a little bit of mica. And right at 55 feet, uh, with the range of the spell that it allows, he casts Shatter using his arcane bond on the containment. So what that does is creates a loud ringing noise, breaking brittle non-magical objects, sunders a single solid non-magical object, or damages a crystalline creature. Um, you could do it again. It's a single solid non-magical object, regardless of composition, weighing up to 10 pounds of caster level. So I guess that would have to mean that it would have to be 120 pounds or less. Well, the, but the um, partially crystalline nature of the ship mine container makes it particularly vulnerable to shatter spells. So continue. <sighs> Targeted against the crystalline creature of any weight, <laughs> the shatter deals 1d6 of sonic damage per caster level with a maximum of 10d6 with a fortitude save for half damage. So that is crucial. It is a level 2 spell, so I only have a DC 18 fortitude on that. All right. I think it uses the wielder's fortitude save, so it is going to pass with a 21. Alrighty, so it's half of these. That is 37 on 10d6. Oh, that, That's terrible. That is more than enough to shatter the already badly damaged container yeah. and send both the Blorb and Tarazi dumping out onto the floor. Sky, metal, Blorb. For the word blorb, that's what I want the sky medal for. <laughs> Sorry, I can't award it to Sam, but it's it's too good. Oh, man, I, I'm going to like, I kind of wish that this got cut out, but I occasionally forget that my arcane bond allows me to choose anything from the spell book, not something that I've prepared. And I usually use it in the latter and incorrect. 
man art. I didn't really. So, like, when I realized that I could dig through all of the spells I have to figure out what could do damage to that thing, kind of sick. Uh, thanks, Real Brixby. All right, well, this thing is down on the ground. Um, looks rather sad where it is, and it's almost like. It's almost like it's slowly dissolving as it's exposed to the air and out of the protection of its tank, but it's still very much alive and very dangerous. And, um, are you going anywhere, or are we going to Alwyn? I am not going anywhere besides hitting myself in the forehead if this thing was literally nerfed by killing the tank. Ugh, I thought I didn't even realize that. Ugh, no, that, okay, sorry, real answer. No, I'm not going anywhere, that's the end of my turn. All right, um, Alowin, you're up. Uh, Alowin is once again going to dig into his handy haversack and pull out a uh, potion that I think was given to him by, like, Brixby. I want to say, I think Brixby, I think. We got this off a loot, like, a million years ago. Uh, but he pulls out a potion of invisibility and then he will drink it and I believe that's the full thing so I think drinking it is an action yeah uh, so Alowin uh, vanishes from sight alright well there's good news and there's bad news for Tarazi oh, yeah being on the floor um, oh, yeah. no longer trapped in the tank the good news is you're not automatically taking plasma damage from being trapped in the tank the bad news is everybody else around the tank is unconscious so it's it's time for Tarazi to get the wrath the wrath of the slaps do I still have the grappled condition or am I free of that I think I think you're free, and I don't think it can immerse you without its tank. Nice. So it's going to kind of slorp its way five feet, as it can now drag itself just a little bit around, and then it's it's going to start slamming. So we'll take it from the right. top. Slam number one. Uh, how is a 38 sound? Uh, bad for me, good for you. Uh, 17 damage and a will save. Uh, lower than a 22, Sam. Uh, one more um, intelligence damage. Slap number two is a 35 to hit. Also a hit. Uh, 15 damage and a will save. Even worse, Sam. Uh, four more intelligence damage. Please stand by. Pretty sure that's gonna... Yep. Terazi is also comatose. Dang. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is... No. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is getting rough. Yikes. Yeah, I hate to see it. So glad I have a mute button. I mean, if it has more slaps, keep on slapping, man. What would uh, what would Star's Whisper do? Well, Star's Whisper, I think, is going to turn its attention um, to the those that <laughs> remain alive in the room, and it's going to it's planning on dragging itself over for some friendship over there. And that'll bring us to the narcissistic Asuma. All right, Asuma, it's all you. She's going to take a shot. <laughs> She's got a lot of shots, and it doesn't have a ton left. Um, let's see. Yeah, first one hits. Okay. I'm bad at math when it's complicated. Shot number two. Yeah, also going to hit. This could do it. Not quite enough damage. Shot number three. Not going to hit. Shot number four is going to hit. Nasuma. Nasuma, with her second to last shot with the frost rifle, manages to take down 
the ship mine. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. She's a jolly good fella. She's a jolly yes. good fella. So it's just What's like a caustic pile of acidy goop spreading out. <laughs> yeah. Like seeping into all, all of the, the unconscious characters <laughs> where everybody um, is unconscious <laughs> and the ship mine's dead too I was talking about Tarazi there or Levi <laughs> there oh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, yeah, the moral of the story is always outfit your GM PCs with cool weapons yeah we immediately before even healing anybody grab the large gun you mentioned and throw it at Azuma <laughs> <laughs> they clearly deserve it. No, oh my gosh. Let's, uh, okay, so out of combat. Oh my god, Alowin, are they dead? I hope not. You hear coming from the air in front of you, and Invisible Alowin is going to immediately run over to the closest one that he can reach, which is Levi, and cast a uh, cure crit on him. Uh, let's see what is. 48. Boom, so that is uh, 30 points to Levi. Does that wake him up? Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay, then he's going to rush to Tarazi, hit him with the same thing. <laughs> Foundry should let me just do it again, yep. Uh, 29 to him. Does he get up, or does he just sit there because his brain is all mushed? It's... He is mushed, but in better health. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then he is also going to hit him with a lesser rest. Uh, so that is if you want to roll, or if I can roll it if you want to. It's a, a D4 in the ability score that's damaged. So you want me to roll it or you want to roll it? Uh, you could roll. I, uh, yeah, okay. you go for it. Uh, so that is uh, two points of intelligence back. Oh, I think that might be enough. We'll find out. Okay. Uh, then he is going to rush over to Kira and... Uh, she, she, he would. She would be obviously not unconscious, right? Because she didn't take enough damage to knock her down. She just took the what you call it. So he's gonna hit her just with the. I mean, she looks pretty bad, but yeah. she's definitely more. Yeah, like he. I think he's seen her unconscious. looking worse than this and still on her feet. So he would need yeah, to start sure. with the restoration. Ooh, that is a four on the die on that one. Is that good? So that is four points of intelligence back. Woohoo! Trazzy is still out, by the way. <laughs> oh, he is. Uh, and he will take one step Not back over. Not to stop over. you from treating Kira. Yeah. Just, uh, I still it. got uh, five more of these I can do. <laughs> Another two points for Tarazi. Probably roll all of them. <laughs> it's That was nuts. Yeah. And I think uh, he's just going to keep back and forth... Uh, healing and less arresting everybody if we want to just kind of hand wave that he's doing that in the background I keep rolling yeah I don't want to go check out the loot until the gang is feeling better Bixby is feeling incredibly protective of his friends yeah. that are now of possibly bestial <laughs> intelligence <laughs> I'm <was> gonna <laughs> say I uh, don't <laughs> I am rolling terrible for Tarazi uh so that's another three intelligence back to Kira and another one back to Tarazi. Oh my god. Ooh. Now I'm smarter than Big Snake. <laughs> it's a snake contest. Snake uh, intelligence contest. You guys contest. both still need more after that. I know Tarazi does, but does Kira still need more? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. Uh, so that is another three to Kira and another one to Tarazi. <laughs> oh my god. Can we switch them? Like and That is my last uh two of those though actually that's a level two can i do a level two with my yes i can i can spend level two sort i can spend level three sorcerer spells to cast more of those thank you mystic the urge um i'm back uh, to my regular minus two you're back okay so i will do another one to tarazi i will use the die i was using for kira there we go that's a three to tarazi awesome oh, that's the wrong spell level you gotta, it doesn't let me use it. I have to pick a spell level of the other class and just put points into it. There we go. I'll pick fly. Uh, there is another four to Tarazi. We're, we're back. Okay. And was Levi Thank down you. int? He was down some, right? 
No, he passed his. Oh, did he pass save, all his? Okay. So it was just the damage. Then, uh, uh, which is good because his int score is one. <laughs> just one. <laughs> oh, so he only has a one int. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking it up to make sure between the no time passing, like, is Hero Lab just wrong? But no, it's only the Paladin's bonded mount that gets a minimum int score of six. Otherwise, you're just with the regular Animal Companion score. Uh, that is another 32 points of healing to Kira. Another 32 points? What was the first one? Uh, oh, wait, no, I didn't heal you. That, so that's the first healing to you. Ah. Uh, 32. And to Tarazi, we got 35. Ooh, thank you. And this one will be to Levi. We got 29. Thank you. See, how many of these do I have left? I have one critical left. Uh, who's the lowest out of the three of you right now? I'm at 42 out of 135. <laughs> that would be Kira. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Kira's getting this last Cure crit. That is another 29. Thank you. And I Cure Serious. I have seven of those I can do, which does, what does that max out as? That only maxes at plus five. So, wait, does that max at plus five? That doesn't sound right. For which one? No, it maxes at plus 15. I was reading the as yeah. Cure Light part. I was going to say, that doesn't seem right. Uh, okay, so it's 3d8 plus 11. Uh, Tarazi take 27. Levi take 22. Cool, Tarazi's pretty close to full at that, so okay. thank you. Uh, Kira take 29. Uh, Levi take 25. Awesome, he's full now. Awesome. And Kira take another 25. I didn't think it rolled because I did the same number twice. Uh, how's Kira looking? She's just 10 down. It's fine. Okay, then I'm going to use this one on me because I'm 45 down. Uh, 23. And it is how many of those? Is that one, two, three, four, five, six? Okay, yeah, I got one more that I'm going to hit me with. 25. Awesome. So I'm full. And I think we are all good at that, right? Yeah. Full or close to it? Yeah. Ooh. Thank you for bringing them back, Alwyn. Yeah, and he's gonna, he's kind of like exhausted, like he's trying to catch his breath, and he goes, uh, I think we're all pretty good now. Uh, I, I had to, I'm not exactly sure how I was able to get everyone's minds back, but it felt like it took a lot more out of me than normal to do, but I think we're we're doing good, because this is the first time he's actually used that ability to draw on his arcane casting to kind of basically overclock his his uh, what do you call it, uh, religious divine. casting, divine casting. It's cool, Thanks, honestly. Oh. Yeah. Nice. My dog started barking. Yeah, uh, Mystic Theurge, really cool. Really mm -hmm. cool to see it in action. Thank you, Alwyn. We were both... Both Levi and I were doing really poorly. Me too. I'm just glad we were able to beat that thing without anyone... Well, I'm glad we were able to beat it. I kind of wish it hadn't randomly decided to attack us, though. That seems like a poor choice on its side. Yeah, I thought we were going to be friends. <laughs> uh, You're scraping that sticker have... off the glass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's sad. Yeah. When you think about it, it didn't have any options. It was purpose-built. And look around at this glorious purpose. Uh, well, at least we have treasure, right? Let's go into hey. these blisters. <laughs> Pop those blisters for loot. Pop uh, those blisters. Mm. It's like we're in Borderlands. <laughs> like, oh, do you want to dig through the horrible wall blister and see if a gun pops out? Yes. Heck yeah. So badly. 
digging through the horrible wall blisters, you find a total of 16 yellow topazes, 7 black star sapphires, a suit of magical looking banding ma banded mail, a magical looking staff, uh, a visor, um, a big old gun as mentioned before, uh, what well, looks like a USB stick, and um, a dozen little spongy spheres that smell an awful lot like Pater's mushrooms. <laughs> um, so, I, I could take a look at the um, techie side. And I can see if I can figure out what this staff is and maybe the armor. So, uh, for Alowin's spellcraft role, because he definitely didn't need this for any of the roles during the combat, uh, he got a nat 20 for a 41 spellcraft. Not too bad. Uh, so, for the magic stuff, you are looking at a suit of plus three banded mail. Wow. And a staff of healing. <laughs> I haven't What's looked that? into what a... Now, is it useless like Pathfinder staffs usually are, or can we actually do something with it? It's probably pretty useless. Probably just break it right now. Yeah. It's probably a money staff. I'm just wondering if it's a money staff or if it's actually useful. Yeah, <laughs> okay. One charge, cure serious. One charge, less arrest. Two charges, remove blindness, thefness. Three charges, remove disease. And, and you mean, power staff charges with your spell slots in 1E, right? Right. So yeah. turning a, a one level spell, a first level spell into serious wounds is not terrible at all. Yeah, that's honestly not horrible. Some great healing economy there. Um, I unfortunately only rolled a 29 on my knowledge engineering. Let's see, looking in my technology guide here, uh, the big old gun, which is what I happen to be focused on, was a DC-28 to identify a rocket launcher. <laughs> I recognize those words. A newly created <laughs> rocket launcher contains its entire load of rockets and energy charges. It cannot be reloaded, and once the final rocket is fired, the weapon is useless. Rockets fired from a rocket launcher can target a single target or a grid intersection. A creature that takes a direct hit from a rocket cannot attempt a saving throw to reduce the damage taken. When a rocket strikes its target, it explodes in a 30-foot radius burst that deals 66 fire damage and 66 bludgeoning damage <laughs> to all creatures within the area. A successful DC reflex DC 15 reflex save halves the damage for all but the target that was directly hit. Um, some <laughs> rocket launchers can carry alternate ammunition. So basically the way we should have done this fight was run into that room and grab that and start firing it at it. <laughs> wow. We may want to check to see if Binox can extend this uh, item's viability, but we should hold on to this for very rare occasions. Uh, it was like that grenade launcher we had, but it fires missiles. Like the spell, the big stuff, and I can guess, but explosive. Um, do we probably want to put this in the bag? The roll was not sufficient to identify the goggles. Well, allow me to unimpress. Yeah, I could. I didn't beat it. Shock. I would have needed a fifteen or higher to beat the twenty-nine, and I rolled a six. That's what I, I rolled, dice. too. I have a dice jail that I got for Christmas, and it is so full. And then, of course, there's the USB stick, which, um... Well, I mean, you know it, that it's another one of these memory facets that, you, like, you found on NimGetter, but I don't think the rolls were good enough to identify what it actually specifically does can't roll separately on that 
Oh, sure, you can roll separately on it. I'll be a softie after the big horrible fight where everybody almost died. <laughs> Yay. It's a nat 20 for a 35. Nice. You are looking at an ingenuity facet. An ingenuity facet grants an AI insight into the construction and maintenance of technological items and robot maintenance. It grants a plus four bonus to disable device checks as well as to craft... Oh, and it also grants the feats craft technological arms and armor and craft technological items. While the AI controls a robot, this facet gives the AI the ability to repair 3d8 plus 15 points of damage to any robot it can touch, including itself, as a full round action at will, but only once per day for any given robot. I mean, I'm sure there's a use for this somewhere. Looks at the visor longingly. <laughs> what are you? Does it look anything like the V-Mods? Does it I, looks, look different? It does look like a V-Mod. It's just um, kind of bluey. So it's hard to say what a bluey V-Mod might do. Uh, probably be adorable and be great for both kids <laughs> and parents. Teach kids valuable <laughs> lessons. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely some valuable lessons in those V-Mods. Uh, for many, real life. How many charges were in the healing staff? Was it full up or? Um, it doesn't say, so I'm guessing it's full. Okay, so that's a full 10. I am actually going to hang on to that because I'm reading up on it. And to recharge it, you can give one charge back a day, and you have to use a spell slot of the highest level the staff can hold, which in this case would be level 3. So basically, I can refill one point into it a day by using a level 3 spell slot when I'm preparing spells in the morning, which for me, that's nothing because I have 8 level 3 spell slots. That's true. So that's pretty good to have a, several extra castings of a spell that I literally just ran out of. <laughs> and this is really dark, but like that can also be used by somebody else with UMD. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, like, like anybody with like... UMD can use that. And what's nice is uh, for something like the Cure Serious, like it uses your caster level, not the level of the thing if your caster level is higher. So cool. So, gang, um, do we want to continue? There are still some spaces. I think we're yet to see, and I've, I think we can also intimate that they're, they're, they're really not inside of this creature, most likely. Understandably. It's particularly gross. Um, but it might be prudent before we end, say, our adventuring day to figure out where they might be, if not in here. Do you all feel like we could kick a couple more membranes? Or should we make a tactical retreat? I can kick some more membranes. Yeah. I've used up a decent amount of my healing, but I still have quite a bit left, though I'm more lacking in non-damage healing like what I had to do to Kira and Tarazi. And I also still have quite a bit of my offensive capability left, though there's not much in this place that that's good for. Many of these creatures have shielded minds in ways that make them hard for me to hurt them. But I think we can go a little further. And I can teleport us out in a moment. Um, it might be prudent for us to stay close in touching um, when we enter new areas so we could very easily leave. Sounds good to me. Me too. Alright, let's go mess up some membranes. Kick that brain. Suma's busy just like stowing some smaller guns in order to heft the rocket launcher. Yeah. I don't think she actually has rocket launcher proficiency because it's not a firearm, it's a heavy weapon. Which is weird because didn't oh. she canonically use a rocket launcher? No, oh, she used grenades. Oh, was it grenades? Okay. Because I was going to say, I thought she used a rocket to blow up that robot. 
But it's touch, right? It's like yeah, touch. it's still touch. Yeah. So you can fire it just with a minus four, but it's slow firing, so it's just the one shot per round. Mm-hmm. So she won't take like the rapid shot penalty anyways, so and I mean, it would kind of be hilarious to watch Alowin shoot this off. <laughs> yeah. Alowin goes flying point. backwards. <laughs> it's like that, what is that, the noisy cricket? From yes, Men from Black. Men in Black. Yes. All right, so we're, we're going back out to the ballroom. Whatever this, other, <laughs> this giant space is. Yep. Yeah, the northwestern um, door in that triangular room with the ship mine led back out into the hourglass shaped room with the Nathalgoos. Oh yeah, I see that over here. Yeah. All right, let's re- After you backtracked through there, you were in the collapsed circus tent of a central chamber where you fought the horseshoe crab with the gun. Where there remains a um closed membranous door. I thought with your plural you said a Nathal goose. <laughs> which is the most horrifying thing anyone can imagine. Yeah. Uh, it's like that Medusa goose, except it steals your brain. Horrible honk from beyond the stars. Or not Medusa goose, uh, Hydra goose. Let's kick that member in. We gotta mash that member in. Kick it. Oops, sorry. Cut off your kick. Go for it. Now Kira takes uh, 15 damage from running in front of Tarazi's kick. <laughs> yeah, and Tarazi pulls a hammy. Yep. Oh, no. <sighs> Adventuring day over. <laughs> All right, opening up this membrane, breaking through it reveals that hallway that you were in before that seemed to loop around the outside of the creature. If you recall, when you came into it before, you found on the west side a door to the south and a door to the north. This appears to be the door to the south, leaving a door directly north of you as the only remaining door. I'm going to say door more so it loses all meaning. <laughs> 36 to check the floor. Um, floor seems safe. Good. <laughs> Which is good because everybody ran in. are in there. <laughs> yep. I figured we were already in this hallway earlier, so I thought we'd be fine, but could be wrong. Nursing his hamstring, Tarazi will kick with his left leg. Uh, oh, that sounds worse, because then you're standing on your hamstring. I know. He regrets it immediately, but still does the kick. <laughs> oh. Uh, I rushed to ice his... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, kicking open this last membrane reveals a 20-foot-high vaulted ceiling. Um, of a round chamber which is held up by rib-like bony arching protrusions from the walls. Twitching fuming gray ribbed cables hang from the walls as well while patches of multicolor light sparkle near the ceiling across the entire hall. A 20 foot wide pillar of decaying flesh two sides of which are dominated by bulging closed puckers uh, rises in the middle of the room. I love that pucker pillar. I really resonated with being a decaying pillar of flesh. Uh, uh, let's enter that room. Uh, all right. Pillar of pucker. Well, I entered in and then thought, oh, I should check the floor. And Tarazi plummets to, to check his floor. death hundreds of feet below. Okay, are we going in? 38 is sufficient? 35? We don't see anything with the floor, I guess. The floor seems okay. Tarazi's standing on it great oh what a relief as you all file your way into the room the bulging puckers on the rotting flesh column near the center of the room uh bulge a little bit more intensely than before and then burst open and a teeming mass or three teeming masses of horrifying swarming insects or worms or horrible beasties burst forth it's time to roll for initiative oh no oh no real long day oh better than last one 
All right, what did Kira get? That is a dirty 20. All right, how about Snake Squad? Even better than last initiative with a 22 total. Alowin. Uh, Alowin rolled at least better than last time, uh, an 8 for a 15. And Brixby. Uh, big 5 for a 13. All right, we are going to begin con- combat. Wow, words, words good. Uh, we're going to begin combat with the inconsiderate one of these creatures, which um, it's going to do what it does and uh, move on up. And unfortunately, it can only either get Kira or Tarazi. I think since I think it's going to just kind of five foot move onto Kira's sw- square here, automatically dealing its swarm damage. So that's going to be four swarm damage. And uh, we need a reflex save from Kira. Four swarm damage. Four. And. That's a natural 20, Sam. Okay, so they're not um, grabbing hold of you. No, none of them are um, getting into Kira's flesh just now. I also need a will save. Oh, good. Oh, no. Fifteen. I'm sorry, it's actually a fortitude save. Never mind. Oh, twenty. No, nineteen. With a nineteen, um... You are distracted by the swarm, and in this case, that means you are nauseated for one round. Uh Uh-oh. So that's fun. You just turn that condition on. So wait, am I I distracted and nauseated, or just nauseated? Uh, Distracted means nauseated, apparently. Oh, got it. (laughs) Nauseated is distracting. You are distractedly nauseated and nauseatingly distracted, and the snake squad is up. Okay, this room's the worst. Uh, Tarazi will skirt around these creatures. I guess they haven't acted yet, so he'll just double move to get back next to Brixby. Um, I don't think we should stay after all. <laughs> and <laughs> Levi will get closer as well to Asuma, uh, who is on the opposite side of Brixby, and that will be Snake Squad's turn. All right. Snake Squad is finished, which brings up Kira. Since you are nauseated, you only get a move action. Um, well, I guess I'll move out of the swarm and maybe closer to my friends. 30 feet? Oh, there's a third one. Okay, I've moved. If you got angry before you moved, you'd be be able to get there in a single... Can I get angry while I'm nauseous? Yeah, it's a free action. It's a free action to rage. Is that okay? Cool. It's just a thought if you'd be able to get there in one move if you were extra fast. No, no, I just didn't realize I could uh, rage while also nauseous. Never too distracted to get mad. I'm sorry, nauseated. Never too distracted to rage. Uh, okay, so then an additional 30 feet. I'll come stand next to my good friend, Alwyn. All right. That That's will bring us to the dopey one of these creatures. We're just going to go 5, 10, 15, and 20 feet just to slurp onto Alowin with a double move. So that is 9 damage, and then I need a reflex save and a fortitude save. Right. Uh, reflex save is a 23. Okay, you're good there. And the fort is... 15 plus 8. I think that's also a 23. Right. Yeah, it is, because I rolled one higher, but my fort is one lower. So you're not distracted either. And good news, it's your turn. Awesome. Uh, so he is going to back up to be right behind Brixby. And uh, then he is going to cast on the one not directly in front of us, but the swarm behind it needs to make a reflex save. All right. Swarms are notoriously good with spells that require reflex saves. How does a 12 sound? A 12 sounds like that swarm is going to be falling to the bottom of an acid pit. (laughs) 
Uh, so that is, let's see, what is, it has a maximum depth of 100 feet, but what is its depth for my caster level? Does it say the depth? Oh, it's up here. Uh, so it is 10 feet per two caster levels. So my caster level is 11. So it is, it falls 50 feet into a pit uh, and will take, take the damage. Yeah, it's going to take the fall damage, which is, why can I not find anything on this? Oh, because I need to roll a uh, scroll. Uh, no, that still doesn't show the damage. Uh, I don't know how much damage you take from falling. I'm assuming it's just a regular existing yeah, 50 thing. 50 feet is 5 That's D6. why it doesn't say it on there. Okay, so they'll take 5d6, and then they'll also take take falling damage as normal plus 2d6 per round spent, so they don't take the acid damage when they fall in. But they will take the uh, 10, what do you say, 10d6 of falling? 5d6 of falling. Uh, 21 points of bludgeoning damage from the fall. All right, 21 points of bludgeoning damage. Doesn't like it. All right, uh, Brixby, I don't know how feverish you're feeling, but you do have rock grubs in your face. <laughs> Not for long, bucko. Hoo-wee! 91 is close, but Pater's familiar grove is still certainly within uh, something that I'm... I'm pretty familiar with so we're teleporting out of sucksville sam and uh don't worry about while we i could have reached to touch me um teleport like dd just one person has to be touching the caster and then everybody else has to be touching each other so we're out of here we're all touching each other we hate these swarms and we're leaving <laughs> and i'm going to bed <laughs> Also, unless those uh, horrible monsters don't have to make climb checks, I want at least one of those to be dead if we go back there later because it is going to be sitting in acid for like 12 rounds. Yeah. Maybe they <laughs> love acid. Know. Maybe <laughs> acid is their favorite. It you don't could know. double their swarmitude. That MF could be so exfoliated by the time that we get there. It's like <laughs> chemical peeled all the way through. And that MF stands for maggot. Finder friends. festival. Friends is better. <laughs> festival. <laughs> they are three maggot festivals. Uh, <laughs> howdy, Peter. <laughs> I imagine we're all like screaming too, because like can't imagine what it's like to teleport out of mid combat, and how like horrifying that must be. Like where you're like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh. We're like in the <laughs> compost pile. All right, we made it. Yeah. Everything's fine. Yeah. Um, you teleport out of the decomposing dropship and reappear back at Pater's. Um, he jumps just a little bit when you all just show up right behind him. He goes, ah, that was, that was sneaky, that one. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> it was terrible. It was so bad. To, not going to lie. It was really gross. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to say anything, but you all smell funky. Like, we were inside a giant monster for a very long time. You shouldn't do that. (laughs) (laughs) Just like if they were to make a list of things that you didn't want to do, that would be like number four at worst. (laughs) At worst. (laughs) Okay. I mean, you know, you might even want a little bit of this goop for your compost. Might be high, and I don't know. Is there Nitrate. phosphorus and nitrates out here? Well, something you got there smells a bit like my mushrooms, but I, uh, other than that, I don't know. It's hard to pick out amongst the sort of a, bouquet of terrible. You have a really good nose. Those mushroom balls. How did he? Are you like a truffle pig? <laughs> you gotta get up pretty early in the morning to sneak a mushroom by old Peter. I'm all over the... Just like my grandmother always said. Mycology boards. You know how it is. But uh, <laughs> While Absolutely. you all recover and probably cast prestidigitation several hundred times to deal with the horrors of the day, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to bed. 
Night, Sam. Good night, Sam. Night, Sam. Good night, Truffle Pig. Good night, Swarm of Sams. <laughs> Good night, Swarm of Sams devouring a bunch of Ezrins. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why that token's like that. Like, they're fine creatures. And that thing is huge. The Machine is property of Network Against the Machine, LLC, all rights reserved. Pathfinder and the Iron Gods of Path are property of Paizo Publishing. See their website for more details. The theme Against the Machine was written and performed by your own Zach. See the show notes for additional music and sound licensing. If you enjoyed the show, we encourage you to do this a review. Go high, go high, go high, go high, go high, go high. Waveforms. Yes. Waveforms. Waveforms. Creepy waveforms. Now recording. Tick Zach tock has never forms. ticked nor talked. Boop. Waveforms. These are waveforms. I'm talking in waveforms. Waveforms. Wave in the formless. Nah, nah, nah. I am going to uh, rescind my turn. Sorry to whoever is editing this episode. <laughs> this one's going to be easy. Yeah, no, it'll be real nice. The, the two up split. Okay. Um, Boop. Why did it turn invisible? Invisible is wrong. It's supposed to be dead. Jolly. Boop. It was like that grenade launcher that we had. But, but it has my dog barking. <laughs>